Okay, so this is the coverage capacity uh, spreadsheet that we use for the LT link budget exercises. Um, now it's a spreadsheet with a number of tabs along the bottom. Uh, we're looking in here at equipment parameters. Uh, there is a capacity coverage, a data density, and a financials tab. Uh, now the financials tab is the sort of the, the primary output of the spreadsheet, and the other three tabs that you see here are for the inputs. Uh, now we'll start here with equipment parameters. Uh, now the general convention is that where we have the kind of bright yellow cells, you can change the inputs here. Um, so we have input um, uh, bandwidth, uh, which is the nominal LT channel bandwidth. Uh, this would normally be 5, 10 or 20 megahertz. Um, now the noise factor, uh, now noise factor here is the same as the, as the noise figure, the receiver noise figure. Uh, which is often given in the exercises, and this would normally be between sort of 4 and 9 dB. Now the following three cells that you see here, these uh, implementation margins for the different modulation schemes, these would normally be normally be around about sort of 2, 3 and 4 respectively for those different um, schemes. Now the implementation margin is used along with the signal to noise ratio which you see in the table down here. And this is used by the spreadsheet to work out the sensitivity value for the different modulation schemes. The sensitivity numbers you can see here um, in the spreadsheet. Um, now, there's also a figure here for diversity gain, um, which is down here as minus three, uh, and that will increase the apparent sensitivity of the receiver by, by about three dB. Uh, in, in one or two of the exercises that we do, uh, we're told to ignore that value, in which case you would set that value to zero. And the final value here is resource blocks, the number of resource blocks in the channel. Uh, now. The number of resource blocks and the channel bandwidth are, um, uh, are part of the same thing, really, uh, but they are separated in the spreadsheet here. So, for example, if I change the bandwidth here to 10 megahertz, uh, then what you should notice when we enter that value is that the sensitivity values change for the different modulation and coding schemes. However, the bit rate did not change. Um, the bit rate, in fact, is related to the uh, number of resource blocks, so we need to change that uh, manually, uh, which in the case of a 10 megahertz channel this would be 50 uh, resource blocks and now when we enter that value you'll notice that the uh, the bit rates do change but the sensitivities uh, do not change um, so for the bandwidth and the resource blocks you'll need to make sure that you set those values both correctly um, uh, for any exercises that we're doing now uh, the, the main purpose of this tab really is to generate the sensitivity values and the approximate bit rates for each of the modulation and coding schemes uh, now you can select the, with these radio buttons. You can select which um, um, uh, which uh, modulation coding scheme you want to use in the spreadsheet. So the numbers here, the sensitivity and the approximate bit rate, uh, those in fact are carried forward into the second tab here on capacity and coverage. And in fact, you can see here for three chosen modulation schemes, um, the bit rate and the sensitivity of those different schemes. Uh, now. Uh, the other yellow box that we have here, um, other inputs that you might be given in any exercises are the base station parameter for output, uh, the antenna gain, and the spreadsheet works out for us what the effective radiated power would be um, for that system. Now you can also enter here the uh, radio frequency um, that we're using uh, along with the chosen area. Okay, now when you click on that chosen area, you'll be offered a number of choices here of dense urban urban suburban and rural and select the one which is appropriate to the exercise which you're carrying out. Uh, now this uh, spreadsheet only works out in the, in the downlink direction uh, so it only really works out downlink budgets so the antenna gain figure that you see here in fact is for the um, uh, for the user equipment uh, now that would normally set to 1 or maybe 0 dBi as a reasonable value. Now you can also set in here penetration losses and fading margins Again, these are figures which will be given to you in the exercise. Now, um, in this particular spreadsheet, you can see there's a number of um, uh, outputs here. Um, now, for the for the chosen area type, so in this case, I've got urban selected. Um, what the spreadsheet will do is calculate for us the maximum allowable path loss for the chosen modulation schemes, and it will work out what the nominal cell radius is on uh, on the basis of a cost two three one. Hatter model um, at 800 megahertz, uh, sorry, 900 megahertz in this case, uh, based on that urban model. Now, if I change that urban model, let's say, to dense urban, then what you should see is the cell radius for each of these chosen schemes will change. 
Uh, now, it also works out what percentage of area that would be uh, if we were plotting against a, um, a circular radio cell, radio cell. Now, the table at the bottom, in fact, just works out for us what the nominal cell ranges are for all of the different areas of interest and the different modulation types that we have. Okay, this is just as a, as a handy reference. In fact, it's useful uh, when doing that exercise, um, or at least one of the exercises, uh, where you're asked to calculate the um, the different modulation schemes over different distances, then you can use this spreadsheet here, this, this table, um, to see what the nominal ratios would be. Okay, now um, whatever values we've got set up here uh, are then carried forward to the um, to the financial tab. Uh, for the exercise that we're looking at, uh, it's we, we we don't really use this data density spreadsheet, and um, perhaps that's something we can come back to later on. Uh, but this is a much more complicated calculation where we try to determine what the nominal capacity demand would be um, in a typical uh, radio sector. Uh, but we'll leave that for now because, in fact, when we go to the final output tab, in fact, you'll see there's a table on the left-hand side here, which is called the quick cost analysis. Uh, now, that could be used to just very, very quickly um, work out uh, you know, the nominal number of radio cells that we might need uh, and the month to break even when we introduce the financial figures here. Now, to make this work, um, then for the quick cost analysis, we need to input here the number of subscribers that we're expected to support in the system. And we would also enter the number of um, uh, square kilometers that we would uh, be covering. Uh, we would also enter there the oversubscription ratio and a customer bit rate. Now, those figures there are used uh, only by the quick cost analysis table here. The cost analysis from data density that you see on the right hand side here uh, uses the more complicated calculation from the data density tab, uh, but we can ignore any inputs um, or ignore these outputs, uh, uh, at least for the time being. Now, both the quick cost analysis and the more complicated analysis does in fact use the um, financial figures that we put in here. So the capex per site, the cost of a typical base station, for example, the opex per site, system opex, and then the customer revenue is used in both cases to work out um, the month to break even that you can see in these tables here. Now, when you're performing the analysis, um, what we should be aware of here is that the, there are two calculations done um, for each of the chosen modulation schemes. Uh, now, one of them here is the number of sites required to meet the capacity objective and the number of sites used to um, meet the coverage objective. Uh, now, you need to be aware, of course, that in this particular case, if we look at 64 cram in this example, um, then we can see, for example, that we could cover the area, the target area, which is 10 square kilometers, and we could cover that with 15 cells. Um, now, of course, uh, 15 cells, uh, whilst that might cover the area, um, in fact, that would not provide us with enough capacity. So we have to be careful to look at both of these numbers to make sure that whichever um, whichever analysis you think best meets the uh, the the criteria required for the for the exercise, you've got to make sure that you've got the one which meets both the capacity and the coverage. Uh, now, in this case, the uh, the um, capacity um, analysis here seems to fit the bill. Um, so we've got 22 um, radio base stations, uh, which will more than cover the area, um, uh, and of course, it now meets our our capacity objective as well. Um, now, the, the, other figure, the other figure that you see in here is the month to break even. Now, in this case, uh, given the financial data that we have over here, um, cost of sites, etc., um, and particularly the revenue from the customer, um, you can see that in this case, um, the spreadsheet tells us it would take 128 months to break even, uh, which is a, um, a rather a long time. Uh, now, let's just quickly change the revenue here to $50 per month. And what you will see, of course, is that the, um, the month to break even in that case will uh, will will come down, um, largely because you've got more revenue um, coming in. Uh, so I mean that's a very very quick look at the spreadsheet, um, and hopefully that'll help you uh, in running the exercise more quickly. Uh, if there are any other questions, we can perhaps deal with those later on. Um, and certainly the data density spreadsheet perhaps uh, requires a little bit more, a little bit more of a look. Um, so well that's it for now. Um, let me know how you get on with that and. Uh, if uh, if we need any more, we can set up a, a session on the um, uh, in our virtual classroom. But that's it for now. Uh, thanks very much. I'll speak to you later.